Today is such an amazing day because I'm headed to my hometown in Newcastle for my homecoming! I mean, I'm so excited. Um, but at the same time, I feel some type of way about it because uh, I already know that's gonna be a long weekend and I've had a couple of long weekends, long days and long nights. But I'm excited and I'm so glad that um, some of the housemates are coming with me. I didn't expect Amatole Funeral to, you know, um, jump on board and, you know, sponsor me. I was, I was so grateful because they are one of the biggest funeral parlors in uh, KZN. And um, the CEO of the company is well established. He's a very good businessman, someone that I really aspire to work with and I look up to. So, you know, when they came on board, I was like, this is my time. This is my time to shine and shoot my shot. So, uh, I mean, I'm still very much grateful that they did that. Can you imagine, you know, V classes? I think it was like five. How many were they? I think it was like five. And they did a convo from uh, Joburg all the way to uh, Newcastle. I didn't pay a dime. I didn't pay petrol. I didn't do nothing. Even on the way, everything was taken care of by them. So I'll forever be grateful about that. I mean, I know people on Twitter had a lot to say about it. They call me the undertaker. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> they call me the Undertaker. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, really. But at the end of the day, it's never going to take away how grateful I am that uh, they came on board. Oh my God, let me tell you, when we arrived in Newcastle, I honestly wasn't expecting uh, dancers and the whole welcoming thing. I thought I'm just gonna go to the municipality, meet the mayor, you know, bounce out, peace out. But <laughs> when I got there, I, I was before, I was three hours late. <laughs> three hours late. <laughs> that day I hated myself so much because the mayor was waiting for me from uh, two o'clock and I only, I, I, I only arrived at three. I mean, six. So that was three hours late. And I hated myself. The mayor had left. Uh, he had just left when we arrived. But the speaker uh, was there, which is, you know, I think uh, the speaker is probably the second highest person in the chamber. So that goes a long way as well. So, I mean, I was happy. I was happy. Because usually when I'm in that building, I'm there as a journalist, you know, interviewing the mayor and the politicians. But today I'm there just, you know, to be celebrated. Incredible, if you ask me. <laughs> dancing <laughs> I was like I've never felt so zulu in my life I was so entertained damn goodness and I always told myself that when I get married I need the uh, Ndlamu it's called Ndlamu actually it's a Zulu traditional dance um, a very uh, active one like you know what I mean <laughs> so I always imagine uh, having these dances on my wedding day ah but I had them sooner than that! <laughs> They're amazing. They're amazing. So after after the municipality and enjoying the whole dance and stuff, then we moved to uh, Blue uh, Ridge Crystal. It's it's in Newcastle. Usually they host weddings and you know prestigious event, but when they heard that I was coming to Newcastle, they wanted to host me in any way 
that they could and it was amazing with them because they they did everything like i didn't i didn't have to pay a cent so ah oh man it was really really amazing that they came through for me like that like oh god i'll never forget them for that and the place they they did it so amazingly you wouldn't even tell that i wasn't a paying client or anything like that but they treated me like someone who was paying them you know and that that's amazing and I, I think it speaks volumes on you know they work ethics but um arriving i have to say i was exhausted at this time i'm finished i am done like i'm ready to jump in bed but at that time i still had a whole entire gala dinner to sit through <laughs> I'm so glad Melly and Juice and Marvin came with me because I think they gave me the energy. Like you know, Melly had the energy th throughout the, 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 the <laughs> throughout the homecoming. Melly had the energy. It was just like, and then sing the Kosi Rains. And when I stepped out, because I was tired, but when I stepped out and the Kosi Rains started going crazy. Let's motherfucking go! <laughs> I had fun, I'm not gonna lie. They're amazing. They are truly amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness, sitting up there with my mom and my niece um, and my family on the side was really amazing. Let me tell you, I. Hey, if I want to be honest with you, with even the speakers, what the pastor was saying, I think I needed the homecoming, which is funny because for me, um, I didn't even know what the homecoming was <laughs> until I was in the house. I remember I was in the house <laughs> and I was talking to Yuvon. I think Yuvon was talking to Black Boy, and they're talking about homecoming, homecoming, and I'm like. I don't want to. I don't want to say that I am not with Nicole Magani, you know. So I'm just like, oh, okay, like, so you wanna do yours? When? And then she says she, uh, she's gonna do hers like a month later after leaving the house. And in my head, I'm like, if it's a homecoming, are you not going straight home? Like, isn't it something that should happen like when you leave the house? And then they explain the whole thing, and then I was like, oh, okay, so. I kind of put two and two together. I was like, okay, so that's a homecoming. That's what it is, you know. So um, a part of me didn't. I didn't think I needed it, but um, Stello um, Goje is the one that insisted that there should be uh, something, you know, that will show how much Newcastle celebrates me and appreciates me. And I was like, oh, okay, actually, apparently with Big Brother, there's this thing called homecoming. So maybe we should do that turn it into a homecoming you know what I mean try to make it seem like a homecoming or whatever and then he just he ran with the whole thing there everything on that um, homecoming was scheduled and planned by him he secured every person that we partnered with uh, the venues the interviews uh, it, everyone who sponsored us it was all him and it was just amazing but the reason why I say I needed the homecoming it's mainly because it really changed my perspective. Coming back to Joburg was different for me because I think I look myself, um, I look my, I look at myself in a mirror very differently now. Because I'm like, girl, you better believe that you are that girl, and um, you are very much capable of anything, anything. Go for all of it. Take it. Take all of it. Don't feel sorry. Don't feel bad. Don't. Because you know sometimes you. you you feel some type of way like I did find myself shrinking you know what I mean because um, I don't want to be seen like okay now that I've worn big brother I'm a certain person so I, I really wanted to be humble not realizing that I'm actually shrinking myself and um, I learned to be humble and confident in myself um, I learned to put the two together and balance it out and since that day, since that day, do you understand? Life has never been the same. <laughs> so I'm grateful. I really needed it. The Kosi Reigns being there supporting me, my family looking at me and being like, wow, Kosi, you really did that. Change everything. And I said, you know what? This is just the beginning because 
Where we going? Y'all not ready. So once we were done at the gala dinner, we made our way to the hotel. But first, we went to the petrol station and we were just living our best life. You would swear we were drinking or something, but at that time, we were sober. <laughs> we had no alcohol. <laughs> we were still sober. And uh, we make our way to Eshisenyama in Madadeni Cold. Um, I'll remember, don't tell me. So we went to Cousins. <laughs> Your, the people in Yukata are going to be like, Did she just forget Cousin? <laughs> we went to Cousin, got some meat, and then we got some drinks. And then it was just the end of the night. We went back to the hotel. Slept like a baby. Well, I didn't even sleep, to be honest, because we came back, I think around 3, 4. And then the meet and greet the next day at Newcastle Mall was it like nine? Yeah. Remember, Stello um, called me in the morning. I literally had slept. If I say two hours, I'm probably exaggerating. Okay. <laughs> so he calls me. He's like, "Are you ready?" I'm like, "Ready." Ready for what? <laughs> He's like, did you see the time, girl? Girl, you better get ready because we're going to the mall now. People, they're calling me at the mall. They say the mall is literally on standstill. People are waiting for you. I honestly thought he was being a drama king. I was like, okay. I didn't even have breakfast at the hotel. I thought I'm gonna go there, take some pictures, then go have my breakfast. And little, little did I know when they said their mom was upset, they really made that shit. Oh God. The moment I got there, we're trying to be low key because, of course, Melly, Juicy, and Marvin were running late. And I didn't want to go in without them, so I was waiting for them. Yes, people. I got there on time and well I was late but they were even worse right so now I'm waiting there I was there, we sit, I'm sitting in a car and I'm waiting and then people start recognizing me yeah that is when the pink hair girl <laughs> that's when the whole thing started <laughs> it was like it's not because she started losing it and then started drawing attention to the car and I was like oh god I'm starving I haven't slept I'm dehydrated and I'm just like oh my goodness where are these people they finally arrived and um, we went inside the mall and it was insane I've lived in Newcastle for 17 years I've never seen the mall that packed and um, I remember <laughs> The next day, <laughs> the next day on Sunday, someone saw me and they're like, Chrissy, you know, she works at the mall. She said, hey, people left their trolleys. <laughs> people, the shop owners were not happy because people left their trolleys and they just went to rush to see, you know, Chrissy. So, uh, I mean, that was amazing. I didn't know how to, I couldn't even hear myself. I couldn't even hear myself. The noise was insane. It was absolutely beautiful. So, uh, when security was focusing on me, trying to escort me, uh, I think they forgot about the rest of the Fantastic Four <laughs> because <laughs> it was a mess. It was a mess. I remember I was on I was on the live, and then I saw someone saying something about Marvin. And in my head, I'm like, wait a minute, where are they? When I look back, oh man, 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 man. it was like they've been thrown in a you know a den of lions and they were coming for them heavy i laughed so much i was looking at them like oh my gosh this is my fault i'm so sorry so <laughs> but you know they survived it's all love at the end of the day you know what i mean it's all love that's what we are about in newcastle you know but i mean they handled it i love how they handled it. they were because i feel like for someone else it, it would have been 
would have been like oh this is too much for me and stuff but with them they're just like embracing the moment love that about the fantastic four love it So from the mall, we went straight to my parents' house in Osuzweni, where, where the, the main event was happening. But I wanted to pass by my parents' house because I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them in three months. You know what I mean? Uh, I do not know how people knew that <laughs> I was going to be there at that time because already I was just not even on schedule. So when I arrived at home, uh, there were people outside of my parents' house and, you know, embracing me, showing me more love. I didn't know how to act because now these are my neighbors. Like, these are my childhood friends. Like, people who just know me, Jingo Sisi, because no one calls me Kosi. Everyone calls me Sisi, uh, you know, in my community or where I'm from. So, I went from being Sisi to Kosi Twala, you know, which is just insane. And like I, I said before, at that time I was still trying to figure myself out, trying to, you know, um, establish myself as an individual because um, a lot happened and uh, a lot of people tried to define who I was and um, I had to figure out who I am. And I was right in between during my homecoming. <laughs> so I didn't know how to act. So I was just like, hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? And I went home. Uh, I saw my mom. I saw my family. So some of my family members, they came from different provinces, from different states to see me and celebrate me. Loving it. But after that, then we made our way to uh, Osuzoni Community Hall, which is where the event took place. And when we got there, the moment they saw the convo, everyone lost it. They started running towards the gate. And um, I was like, guys, I was starving. Yeah, yeah, I was so hungry. God, and if you've seen Marvin's vlogs on YouTube, you know how I am when I am hungry. <laughs> Yeah, the moment I was hungry, you know, then, but I almost cried. And when they started singing uh, while I was in the I didn't even know how they knew which car I was in. They, they surrounded the, car, uh, the van I was in and they started chanting and singing. It made me really emotional. And I was like, okay, but can somebody get me a plate? <laughs> this is all beautiful. And the crazy part is that merely Juice and, uh, and, and, and Marvin as well haven't ate. At this time, um, I think at this point, it's around 11 to 12. Like, can you imagine? We, we, haven't, we haven't ate, we didn't even sleep. But I was expecting them to like, maybe ask me like, Kosi, when are we eating? Or like, ah, oh, Kosi, we're tired. Nothing. I didn't know that for homecoming you're supposed to invite your housemates, right? So how it came about and how we ended up with the Fantastic Four, I didn't even know that uh, you were supposed to bring along housemates. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was a thing. But um, during Marvin's connection, let me tell you this or how we ended up with the Fantastic Four. <laughs> during Marvin's uh, connect, um, were they vibing, having, having fun? I remember we're, in, we're on top of the bed. And I was just like, um, you know, at home they're painting something for me. Um, you guys should actually come. You guys should come. And um, it was Nelly, Marvin, Yaya, um, Luke, and Juice. And they were, they were all like, yeah, we're done. They were, they were all like, yeah, we're down, right? They're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so I didn't really get to invite everyone. I didn't get to invite. I just said it in passing, really. And they were like, no, just heat us up when you're ready. And I did that. 
um, I couldn't reach Luke and Yaya was in Cape Town so the Fantastic Four were like we got you baby let's go and um, I'm saying this because I sometimes God's plan is just amazing because them being there and the way they were so supportive and the way they were everything happened how it was supposed to like I'm just like I can't even imagine how it was gonna be without one person or the other like it was just so perfect yo it made so much sense like <laughs> ah, love them sabatant We started I loved how you know the housemates were just helping me along because I mean it was a lot of people and I was going through a lot I wasn't feeling very well I think my um, my, my, my my physical state wasn't at its best at this point because I haven't been eating right I haven't been getting enough sleep so I was just I, I was I was not myself and uh, uh, they carried me through they carried me through when I walked in that stage and they started screaming I wanted to cry but I was like my makeup <laughs> I was like I'm not gonna cry I'm not gonna cry I'm not gonna cry it was beautiful it was beautiful I think that's one of the few moments where I almost cried like the tears were right there because it was just like it was overwhelming it was overwhelming that's the word yes <laughs> um, so you know, uh, I, 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 you know, I was up there. I said what I had to say. But the most nice part is how we all got to eat at the end of the day. The food was very delicious. I didn't know who was responsible for catering, but they did an amazing job. And yo, I was so happy to see my community uh, coming in to support me, and now coming in together, enjoying you know a meal or fisting over a meal that we have provided for them it was beautiful it was beautiful so after the after the um, the main event homecoming we went back to newcastle and we went to our hotels and we, like i was like guys they went, they went to, i think they went to eat you guys went to eat ne? after the yeah they went to eat enjoy um uh, so i was just like i'm gonna go to sleep i went to the hotel i shut down the 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 the, 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 the windows the curtains it was dark and i took a shower and i went straight to bed i slept for one hour but when I woke up, because we had to go to um, the show, uh, the Newcastle Show Festival, right? So um, when I woke up from that nap, <laughs> I was like, let's rock the nation. I was like, time to rock the nation. Let's go. <laughs> and um, I enjoyed myself there I'm not gonna lie I enjoyed myself and to me you know what's funny about um, this part I wasn't sure about it like I remember when Skelly was telling me about it like hey we can actually do this so I was like I don't know <laughs> I was like Ooh, okay no right let's do it uh, but it was so much worth it because the crowd was insane the crowd was insane the crowd aligned with us like it was like it was such a vibe
you have an event and you want a vibe, make sure you get yourself a fantastic four. Finish. I woke up and it was Sunday, which was the last day of the um, uh, of the whole homecoming and um, I was so excited I think throughout the homecoming I was looking forward to Sunday like I was looking forward to Sunday because um, it was sort of like a launch like I was relaunching good deeds I had redefined good deeds um, I had done a couple of changes with good deeds so it was like a new beginning for good deeds and it felt so good Sunday was amazing and um, I love how the housemates were there for me. They helped me. Every single step they were there with me. It was absolutely amazing. Good Deeds was wow. It's amazing what you can do for people by just being nice. By just being nice. And the Kosi Rain, you know, they came through with Good Deeds. That was mainly them. Good Deeds was Kosi Rains. They, they really came through. We, we tried to make it work and all we wanted to do is just to put a smile on someone's face and we did more than that because um with the families we went to you could see how grateful they are one of them even said that they didn't even have food for that day and now they're gonna have something to eat now they have something to eat before they go to bed and um it's the small things that we do and they touch people's life and they make such significant different my main um, goal with good deeds like one main message I want to pass across with good deeds is that God is there God cannot come down on earth and tell you that you're my child I love you I'm there for you that's the whole point of good deeds like I want someone or I want people to feel loved and seen and cared for and I want them to understand that that is all God, just using good deeds, you know? And I think uh, we achieved that. It was amazing. Oh. I don't even want to talk about good deeds because I get emotional, you know, so. So, you know, after good deeds, we said uh, we're going to go straight to the hotel, freshen up and turn it up. Okay, I was like, I was ready to turn up. <laughs> It was a party. It was a party. We were having fun. We, I think for a second I forgot um, all my stories. I forgot all my problems. Uh, like going back to Joburg, like we back to square one. So I enjoyed myself very much. And I was glad to see um, everyone else enjoying themselves. So I think it was the perfect way to just wrap it up, put it in a box, and frame it up and be like, baby girl, we did it.
and you know i just would like to thank every single person who was there with me who uh, supported me who believed in me because it really went a long way a long way and i know that and i'll always say this uh kirsty reigns they are my foundation no matter how far I, I, i'll ever go in life um it will be because of them so when you guys see me on Forbes 30 under 30, when you guys see me striving, living my best life, being this amazing woman who owns a couple of yachts and you know, private jets, just know that you played a role in that. You guys gave me the best surprise. People think the money that I still haven't gotten, by the way, big brother, please now. Uh -uh. <laughs> I stayed in that house for three months. Uh -uh. Please now. <laughs> People think that the money I won uh, is the biggest prize, but the biggest prize is my fan base because one thing for sure and two things for certain. Cosy Reigns. <laughs> that, whoa. Cosy Reigns are a force. They are a force and that's the biggest gift I've, I've gotten from this whole entire journey and that I'll forever be grateful. I can't wait for you guys to, you know, uh, see my second vlog. Is that what we call it? Vlog, yeah? Vlog. Yes! Uh, I'm definitely gonna upload more content, you know? And I promise it's not gonna take this long. Just that there was a lot happening in between, uh, so I couldn't like shoot and finish everything, but the next one won't take, it won't be that far, actually. So, with that being said, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Christy Rain. Thank you to every single person that supported me, sponsored me, partnered with me, even believed in me. Um, thank you. Okay, I gotta go now. I gotta, I gotta fly to catch.